Let me ask a difficult question that needs to be asked here. <laughs> Can uh, SpaceX continue uh, its successes without Elon? This long-term mission to Mars, I, I think the discussion about Tesla and autopilot or robotics or Neuralink with brain computer interfaces is a question wholly separate from the SpaceX question <laughs> um, because there's a lot of other competitors doing um, some different but amazing engineering that Tesla is doing in both autonomous vehicles, semi, semi autonomy or full autonomy. And obviously in vehicle design and electric vehicles, there's a lot of people that are doing incredible brain computer interfaces. But it, while there is a lot of competitors to SpaceX, and we'll talk about many of them, they're doing amazing work. It seems like he's really driving progress here over the past 10 years. What do you think about that? Okay. The first thing I think to remind people is just how many brilliant people do work at each of these companies, obviously. Yes. You know, Elon's had the some of the best teams assembled ever. Just incredible people. He knows this. He he will gladly tell people, and he says it often, like the amazing people, the amazing teams here. So it is important to remember that. Um, that being said, like there is something to Elon's just super far forward, not taking no for an answer on things approach that, and, and, and <laughs> almost to his dismay, I think he is afraid of the sunk cost fallacy so much that it almost, almost gets to the border of like being, you know, like throw out everything before it's even we've, we've known it or not, but at the same time, like it moves the needle mm -hmm. so fast, so far. So as far as the question of would SpaceX continue to like succeed and, and be able to ultimately go to Mars without Elon, the Mars thing I think would probably be hard to uphold without it. I think a lot of that drive for Mars is from Elon. Um, it is maybe too fantastical for the average person and the average employee and maybe the average CEO that might step in to have a company's mission be to go to Mars. Like it's just- Or even governments. Yeah. Clearly, because like you said, the Mars plan was non-existent for NASA. Yeah, still really, there isn't much, you know? So I, I think if- and how many people, and sorry to interrupt, how yeah. many people are talking about, it's obvious that we need to become multiplanetary. Right, there's not a- <laughs> There's the Mars Society and the, like serious yeah. leaders of engineering uh, efforts yeah. or, or nations and so on. Yeah. There's Which it does seem, if you think about it, that it, it's obvious. Yeah. In the grand eventuality, it, it is <laughs> of, obvious. Of, the, of human civilization, this whole human experiment we have here, we should be uh, expanding out into the cosmos. 100%. So I think the big mission, if we're, we're measuring SpaceX, SpaceX's success on getting to Mars or not, I think they'd have a really hard time um, continuing to fulfill that drive without Elon at the helm. Um, now, I think there's a certain balance and beauty of Elon, specifically when it was Tesla and SpaceX, where Elon will go in, you know, have mild tornadoes around the factory and the, the engineering, you know, and like mix everything up and, and things get sometimes just totally thrown together, you know, and, and totally just like, get it done just to to get it done and, and start moving that direction. And then he'll leave and go do that same thing, you know, at SpaceX or Tesla, vice versa. And then there's a little bit of a calm where people come back in and they fill in those gaps, yeah. you know? And I think that's kind of always been a pretty healthy thing, honestly, is like, I think if he is too focused on on any one thing, it almost is like he'll spin too much, you know, like it's mm -hmm. like the- Too many tornadoes. Yeah, too many tornadoes. <laughs> and, it, and I think it could almost be like, you need someone to come back in and like, you know, like backfill almost. Because yeah. I've, I've heard definitely stories of like, like well, probably a good a good example would be last um, last. Well, was that last year or two years ago? Twenty twenty two. Yeah, was that? Yeah, or no? Twenty twenty one. They did a, the first full stack of the Starship Super Heavy, and they, they called it the big surge. All of a sudden, like thousands of SpaceX employees, you know, came down to Starbase, and they just started building like you wouldn't freaking believe. I mean, it's just things going crazy. BP, it was actually in the middle of that first interview I did with him was in the middle of that surge. There was like commotion, like you wouldn't believe. You couldn't hardly talk because there's just so much going on. People just welding and blah, 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 you know. Everything they did during that period was basically scrapped because it was just not done very well. But they got a fully stacked Starship rocket out on their launch pad, you know, and it, it set 
it, it, I think at some point you kind of have to stabilize some things enough and just say like, this is what we're doing mm -hmm. to catalyze some things and say, now do this. And it's almost like, do it for fake, now do it for real almost. It's funny because through that time, because I had a lot, a lot of conversation with him, I think that process was hugely stressful. There was a sense, I don't know where that sense is today, but there's a sense that Starship is going to be very hard to pull off. Yeah. Oh, like that's still borderline impossible to pull off. And, and and that was really weighing heavy on him and the team and everybody. Yeah. So it's like to have this chaos of development is fascinating. Yeah. Big time. And I think they really had to push, you know, if they hadn't done that, if they hadn't done that big push, you know, we might only be now seeing a rocket stacked for the first time. Um, you know, it might be a lot more finished rocket, a lot more high fidelity, a lot more flight worthy rocket finished and and stacked. But um, and they might not have to walk stuff backwards. But at the same time, like you do have to in, in this world, <laughs> you do have to push really hard uh, to to make rapid iteration and ra rapid change in progress. So it's it's interesting. I don't know.